Okay, guys, I'm sorry that, um, you know, I did post in the dashboard, so I hope you saw it, uh, that I will not be able to do class live on Tuesday because I'll be at the airport. So uh, it's too much noise. I've had to delay my flight home um, due to my father's health <clears throat> and arranging hospice. So anyway, uh, I recorded Friday as I posted also in the dashboard and I posted the video there in the dashboard, my YouTube channel of how to navigate test out and a little overview about the chapters and about test out and what you're going to be doing. You should have access. You should have been given access. I'm gathering today or yesterday from new paths. Um, <clears throat> if you have not, please, please get a hold of Carly right away because you have work that's due Tuesday. Now I've got the agenda pulled up here and we see what I was going over on Friday evening. I went and pulled up the agenda to kind of give you an idea of what we're going over. So you will be doing the chapters in test out, but you're not doing all sections in each of the chapters, only certain ones <clears throat> as we move along. Also, I did just go in just now and I changed the date for this pretest uh, to May 30th. I'd like to see how you do by then. And it kind of starts prepping you uh, for taking the exam. I don't really feel comfortable having you do it now and have it due on Tuesday when you really haven't, um, maybe some of you know networking okay, but I don't feel comfortable with, with you doing that if you don't really understand it yet or know all the ins and outs of it. So I'd rather wait and see how we do in a few weeks, you know, see how we go. <clears throat> okay. So I was saying, um, I will be at the airports, but I will be doing Wednesday and Thursday. So please know that. Uh, and from here on out, because I, I hope, well, fingers crossed, I won't have to come back to North Carolina until after our course is done. Uh, I also posted just now in the dashboard, I was asked by a student uh, that did not pass the AZ 900 if you continue in the class. Of course you continue in the class. Just because you do not pass the AZ 900 does not mean you do not continue or that you're kicked out of the course. We just keep moving on. You're going into the test out now for Network Pro and then will lead to the CompTIA Network Plus exam. Okay, and if you have any other questions, please feel free to email me. I'm not, uh, my flight leaves at 8.37 on Tuesday night, which means I will be sitting at the North Carolina airport here in Charlotte <clears throat> about 6.30. And I'll be on the road at 5.30 uh, to be dropped off. So I can answer up until about that time. And then I can answer at the airport while I'm sitting there. Okay. All right. So let's get into this then. So here's our agenda again. Uh, you're going to review the videos and the fact sheets provided in test out for sections two and three. And then the assignments you have to do are the test out lab sims, the simulations for chapter three. <clears throat> and I showed you kind of how to use your your table, your work table and the shelf and getting your uh, uh, piece of cables and devices off of it and how to use front and back and enlarge the image. So please, you know, if you get confused, let me know if, if, if you have any issues. And then the live session, what I'm doing today is I'm going over what I would be doing on Tuesday is just networking basics. And I have a little presentation that I use. And then on, um, I can't really fabricate a, a fiber cable, but I can fabricate a Cat 5E cable for you. So I'm going to do that on uh, Wednesday. And talking about uh, uh, network cabling and hardware devices. And then on Thursday, we'll be going over networking, addressing, and services. <clears throat> All right. And then you'll, we'll go over then Saturday, what you have due, which will be section uh, four. Okay. Uh, and always do the practice exams, though. Always do those domains that are listed here, uh, the domain networking fundamentals. You should always do those. Make sure you do those. Okay. So let's get into then the presentation. All right, I'm gonna start that little sucker. Uh, righty, here we go. So I have a number of videos in them. I'm not going to play all the videos. I would like for you to go back if you so choose to. Uh, I will explain certain things, but this is just giving you an idea about a basic LAN network setup. And there is wireless in here. I'm pretty sure you all have set up your own home wireless network. Um, <clears throat> but <clears throat> the basic terminologies that we use. So here we go. Again, just basic. So the networking components that we look at, let me make sure I'm sharing this. 
just want to make sure I get paranoid after a while. Okay, there we go. It's there. Because uh, sometimes when I switch from page to page, it changes. All right. So we have networking components, and there's about six of this six of the basic that we use in order to start creating our network, our network design. Uh, if you look at your home network, you have a nice little uh a home area network, which what would be called a HAN, H-A-N. And we're going to get to that if we move down in the presentation. So you have your own little home area network and you have certain components that you use in order to interconnect and then get out to the internet. Or you can interconnect locally and just talk amongst your devices. But getting out to the internet, you're going to require certain access, right? Certain ways to get there. So we look at what's called endpoints. And endpoints just mean we use these particular devices. So we have servers which connect to network devices such as a computer or your smartphone or a tablet or printers, thus providing the means to communicate by um, <clears throat> providing and retrieving this information back to the units that we're utilizing. So some common endpoints, as I said, mobile phones, desktops, tablets, virtual environments, right? Uh, laptops, servers, and our workstations, because we all use different things. But that's what the common endpoint devices consist of. And we must have that server or servers in order to be able uh, to get access and go out to those domain name servers, which are your uh, internet folks out there on a, on a wide area network. You've got like uh, I go to Amazon a lot. Uh, I go to Florida Gateway a lot. I go to New Pass a lot. That's what I'm talking about. And there's servers to be able to access those locations. And they have a domain name. Because Lord knows, we would not be able to remember the IP addresses for all of the places that we visit on the internet. I know I couldn't. So the second thing that we want to look at when we look at network components are network interface cards, otherwise known as NIC, NIC network interface cards. And these can be built into your devices or you can add to the device that I didn't mean to spell device, I meant to spell device, to retrieve information from our network server. So these connections can consist of ethernet, which is copper, uh, fiber, broadband, USB, which are external, uh, wireless, usually via uh, electrical radio frequency or light signals. So this is a little example here. Here's a PC and here's some servers. And we're using the network interface card, this network interface card that would be in this computer to then uh, talk to the server and go out to the Ethernet to, right, our Ethernet. We have to connect via Ethernet. And these are types of network interface. We have internal and then external when I'm talking about USB. So these are usually into our PCIe slots in our computers. Uh, I have an all-in-one, so I don't have that kind of slot anymore. Or you can have a wireless network interface card that also plugs into that. Or it could be a USB type wireless uh, network interface, but that would be external. So these are internal that go directly inside the computer. Anything else would be outside the computer that you could just plug into a USB port or, <clears throat> yeah, for wireless. Okay, so again, in order to utilize your PC to the server, you have to be able to connect and you have to have this network interface in order to do it. And that for this, this is called the ethernet, as I was saying. So we plug in, this is what it looks like on the side. And I used to have these uh, in, um, <clears throat> in, in, in surplus at UF, because as I've mentioned before, that the modular <clears throat> modular uh, connectors on the computers, especially on um, a tower, they would usually crap out. I don't know why. It was always the Ethernet. It wasn't like USBs or audio or HDMI. It was always the RJ45 connection right here to this, the adapter going into this port. So I always kept these on hand so that I I could plug them directly inside into the PCIe slot in order to keep connectivity going until I could get the repair the to get that module that had all those different connectors that are associated uh, for that computer replaced. And Dell was very good about that, and I could just swap the things out. But <clears throat> I liked it when it was easier just to swap individual things instead of having modular that had everything built into it. So again, you need to have a way to network interface and you're using a network interface card or some type of device to be able to connect 
ethernet or fiber or using wireless. <clears throat> now, I love Linus. If you've never uh, done tech, tech quickies from Linus, uh, I subscribe to his channel I have for many years. And he explains the difference between servers versus desktops. And you can turn a desktop into a server, just like I told you I did with my veterinarian down in Miami. Uh, he didn't have to buy a big old server, which is like could be thousands of dollars. We just turned a, because it was a small veterinary clinic, I could just turn in the desktop into a server for him and use server software. It wasn't to be used as a computer. It was to be his server. So I used an op I used the Optiplex 900 series in order to do that. So please go back and watch about servers because we need to have the servers to be able to communicate and get resources within our network. <clears throat> Also, you have what's called a client server and a thin client. Now, I have two videos for that as well to kind of start helping you to think about this. With a client server, basically, it's the relationship in which one program, meaning the client, requests a service or some type of resource from, say, another program. Thus, that's the server. So think about accessing the web. You use your device to get out there to go to a domain which could be anybody you're looking for. I'm gonna just use Amazon. And by doing so, I want to access from my device, a resource from Amazon. So I'm going to go from my client to that server to get there and get what I need. So, and this explains more about the client server model, okay? And then thin clients, uh, or what is also known as a lean client, is basically a virtual desktop computing model that runs the resources stored from the central server instead of a computer's resources. So you just go to that central server, get what you need, and do what you want, and then you're not storing it on your computer. You're not storing Office Suite. You're not doing any of those things. You're running it as a thin client and using the central server instead. And Virtual machines do that. Of course, we use hypervisor and other things to help it along, but nothing is really stored on the thin client. And I have a video for that as well. Now, when I talk about computer network nodes, nodes are just another word for device. You have also the network interface controller. And that part is the computer component that connects a computer to a computer network. Just as I was talking about network interface cards, the network interface, um, this is what I was talking about with the integrated modular area. You can have different ones. It's also known as a network, and there's a network interface controller that we use on our network as well to work with those interface cards, uh, continuing on. So as you see here, I have um, for my app, my Mac, I have to use this because there's no USB port. There's no USB port. I mean, there's not USB. There's no RJ45 port on my MacBook. So it plugs in via a USB. So I can take my Ethernet cable and hardwire to it. And the same thing here. And back to that LAN card. Now, this is what I was talking about, that this on the computers that I would get nine times out of 10 throughout a couple of years, and it mainly was on the Dell computers, this RJ45 port would crap out. The rest of these were working fine. So that's why I used to keep these in surplus. Um, but, and then once I got the part, then I would replace it. But I always kept these in, it's because you don't want to stop the person from doing their job. So also known as a network interface controller. Okay. But again, this, you, I still have some of these adapters that I use if I want to hardwire. If you don't have a network port, a U, uh, an RJ45 ethernet connection, on your computer, you can buy the adapter, which is a USB to RJ45 adapter. Now the modem, I'm sure you all have seen a modem or use a modem, similar to some of the features that a router does, but the modem modulates and demodulates. And mainly because of the signals that are coming in from like I have AT&T fiber, so it modulates signals to encode digital information and then demodulates the signals to decode the transmitted information. So you might, yours might look like this. I use the Motorola surfboard. I don't tend to use the product. I don't want uh, my provider's um, modems because I don't trust them for information and stuff. Uh, so I purchased my own. They're not very expensive. And also when you, uh, when you have a provider, 
um, they're charging you monthly for the rental of that device. So you're paying for their piece of equipment. I would rather just buy my own and I'm investing in my own equipment. And it's not much more. I mean, you figure if 10 bucks a month, I can buy a decent router, a wireless router. That's not, I don't have to get something terribly expensive to be really moving along. And I have an, an AX, a Wi Fi 6 AX router. So it's dependent on you. Now, this one still has coax on it. You have USB connection on it and you have Ethernet. So you'll notice on this as compared to um, a, a, a switch or a router that you only, depending on what, what you get, uh, you only have so many ports. Now, on mine, I have about four ports to it. <clears throat> so this is a bit older. And you'll see that it when it turns on it, you get power. You should see the power. Uh, usually it lets you know that it's receiving, it's the information and sending, that it's online and active and act, the activity on it and if there's a standby. So whenever I'm looking at mine to see, is it still connected? Uh, those two green lights should always be going. They shouldn't be blinking or anything. And that tells me that my, my modem's working properly, which is connected, connected to my wireless router. So I'm using a modem and a router. So I have my own home wireless network. But you can just get by with the modem. You don't have to have a router unless you want to have one. <clears throat> okay. Then we get to network media. And all network media means is how are we connecting this? What are we using logically to connect our devices in order to be able to communicate? So it's either done through LAN, local area network, Ethernet cabling. So you have CAT 5E, you have CAT 6, you have CAT 7, there will be CAT 8, and there is a CAT. And all the E means is enhanced, and CAT 6 does have enhanced. Um, and again, via electrical, it's, copper uses electrical, wireless uses air for radio frequency, and lastly, fiber optics uses, of course, light. So here's an example of copper, and it's a twisted pair, four pairs of two, uh, solid with a stripe, and it's usually brown solid, brown and white stripe, green solid, green and white stripe, orange solid, orange and white stripe, blue solid and blue and white stripe. And they do have to go in, a, in an order when you are terminating cables, which I'll show you on Wednesday. Um, and they are pins one through eight and they are read from, read from left to right, just like we read, okay? And I'll go more into that as we get into the cabling on, on Wednesday. Fiber, as you can see here, is very, very thin, thinner than our, really thinner than our hair. But these are the connections, the different types of fiber connection, the, um, the uh, adapters that we use to plug into the ports. Uh, depending on what you're going to be, what switch you're getting and how you're connecting to it. So there's different ones. And then, of course, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with wireless, a wireless router and, and the antennas do make a difference as far as how many antennas you have. So this is, I thought this would be better for you to understand the different types and what they look like. Um, when we look at connectors and adapters, continuing on, again, RJ45s are used, and this is an RJ45 adapter right here. And this is what we terminate when we crimp, okay? Um, and fiber optics, it varies. Like I just showed you some of the connections, so they vary. And you can make different length patch cores, the cords. This is what we tend to use. It's called network media when we're deciding, when we're laying out our network and designing it, what we're using to interconnect. And you can mix. It doesn't have to be all this or all that. You can mix. Uh, and also sometimes you have to, depending on how much money you have. Uh, and they are reliant on a network type. So I have them here for you so you can see the differences on some of the adapters that we use when we terminate and what they look like. Now, Cat5, Cat6 and all that, they are a much less expensive route to go than fiber. But then, of course, the, the gauge and the Cat number is going to be dependent to cat six is, is always a little more expensive than cat 5e and also back to linus i do have about cat 5e cabling now when i say shielded twisted pair and i'm going to go over this on wednesday shielded twisted pair means it has a uh it uh, almost looks like aluminum foil around it and it's shielded to protect the twisted pair so you don't get crosstalk um or any interference now, unshielded, which is UDP, that's the most common that we tend to use because it's cheaper. And it's not, if you go back, let's go back and look here. Um, if you look at these, let me see if I can make this. 
this is a different presentation than what I normally use, but you'll see this is this is this is the shielded twisted pair, and this is the unshielded twisted pair. So this has more protection to it. And Cat Six actually has an insulator, a plastic insulator that runs through the center of it. I'll show you. I think I have some Cat Six at home. I can show you that. Um, so yes, this is has more protection than this does as far as interference or crosstalk. Now that doesn't mean that we it's going to be a problem if you use it, because I've used it for many, many years when I've done a lot of installations. Uh, the idea is it does cost a little more money and people get funny about budgets and saving money. So unshielded twisted pair just means that it does not have the insulation or protection as a shielded twisted pair does. I have a really cool video on fiber and how it's made. I like, I don't know if you all have ever watched the show, how it's made, but I love that stuff. So this video is, is about about fiber and, and how it's made. And of course it's glass or it could be plastic, but usually it's glass to transmit data. So that means that we can go a much further distance and greater bandwidth without having so much of any signal interference when we're using fiber optic. That's why it costs so much. Now this I'm gonna go ahead and play. I think it'll play. Um, this is actually in a, uh, like I said, a different presentation, but I do have, let me try, I'm trying to move myself out of the way. Okay. So as I've said before about band, I don't know why that's sticking. Um, bandwidth is extremely important when you're designing a network. That's why you need to know how many devices do you need to have on the network? How, what type of resources are they going to be utilizing so that you can decide what's going to be the best for the bandwidth uh, for your business or that particular enterprise. And remember, when we look at bits per second, that's what BPS is. Uh, in most modern networks, we're looking at uh, gigabits per second now, gigabits per second, not so much the megabytes, but we're into gigabits. Uh, and I'm gonna have to double check the video on that one. But it's really cool how he, and it's only like a minute 13 or something, explaining about how bandwidth works, especially streaming when you're streaming video. I like the balloon concept. And then the fifth one, which is about the switch. So we've got the other components, we've got the network interface and all of that, but you have to have a way to connect your devices, right? Um, so in your network. Uh, and so all those cables and everything that we're doing and laying things out and designing our system, we need to be using a switch. So the switch will then forward our data packets between the devices on our network, or if we use our router to other networks, the switches will send the packets directly to and from the devices, meaning your source and your destination. So you see here, we are all, all the PCs are on this particular local area network, and this is the switch that we're connected to. And how I would do it when I was doing my installations is, I would always make sure that depending on the room numbers and the building and so on, how I would start with the ports, uh, ports on the switch, I would always left number one for the router, but um, I would always try to coordinate it to two with the data port on the wall that I would put a, make a label for that in this room here, it starts two, three, four, however many computers are on, then go to the next room and the next room and the next room so that my network map would make sense, especially if I was no longer there, which helped the person uh, that we did hire once I left UF. Um, so it, it makes more sense. And also when you're running the cabling down and if you use a patch panel, which we'll, I'll show you eventually, a patch panel, correlate that to number one or two, three, so two, three, four, five, six, so that they match as you run, as you fish those lines through, when you do your data ports and run them through, the perimeter of your building and come down. Usually you'll go to patch panel and then the switch connects to that with patch cables. I do have a video uh, on hub switches and routers to explain how they work. We don't really use hubs anymore because a hub broadcasts to everybody uh, that's connected to the hub. Uh, we got rid of those a while ago, but sometimes I did have to use them when I was at UF because uh, we ne didn't necessarily have another switch in time for me to add to another building. So I, uh, especially with students that would come and go. And so when they would get some extra students, I would just use a hub, plug four computers into that hub. It broadcasts all the same information, taking up the bandwidth to those four instead of just this port is relegated to this and you're managing the switch. This would, this would be an unmanaged switch, 
meaning a small four port or five port hub, but it's a switch, but unmanaged. And again, it just broadcasts to everybody. Whereas a managed switch does not, you are configuring those ports and it's only going to that co computer. It's not being blasted out when information uh, is sent to that unit. It's only going to that unit. So please make sure you go back and um, watch that. And then the last thing is when we look at our components, the router. The router is the brain. That's all you have to remember. And I have a video after this one. The router is the brain. And that brain, okay, uh, then tells everything else what to do, right? You don't have two brains. So you only need one router and for your local area network. And then you can have many routers because you can have many local area networks within your enterprise. So with that, usually there's the switch. The switch connects to the network interface of that router. And then that router can connect to other networks to communicate on our what becomes a very big enterprise network from our little local area network. So again, a router is the physical or virtual appliance that passes information between two or more packet switched computer networks. We are talking to each other or within our own little local area network. And it will decide and provide the best access path between the networks to, and to the internet as well, because it's what gets us out to the internet. So you'll see in this example I've provided, you have a sales department on one local area network and you have the accounts department on the other local area network. Each has their own switch. It shouldn't say hub, but well, when I say hub, when I talk about switches and hubs now, I had hubs in my buildings, but they weren't a little four port unmanaged switch. So you see, you got printers, a server, some clients, same thing on the other side. And now we're connecting to a router to take us out to be able to communicate between the two departments and also to go out to the internet. And that's the purpose of the router, okay? It connects the two networks together, but it also will connect both LANs to be able to get outside, to get out to the internet where they need to go. And I do have a little video on that. Now, a little bit about wireless. With wireless, we have different generations. They don't call them by the, um, 802.11 anymore. They call them now by Wi-Fi 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we're at Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 7 is actually coming next year. And then Wi-Fi 8 down the line. So right now we're at Wi-Fi 6, the 802.11ax, which was released in 2018. I'm still I'm using the 802.11ax. Uh, but I've given you some information from the IEEE, the, elect, um, the International uh, Electronics Engineering Group, um, and along with the Wi-Fi Alliance, and remember I was talking about Wi-Fi Alliance, is when you see it looks like a little yin and yang almost uh, on uh, when you're purchasing a Wi-Fi product, uh, that means that the Wi-Fi Alliance has approved this product and it's gone through the quality assurance that it needs to by what their, what their protocols and procedures are. So I tend to only buy things that have that on it. Uh, but they have worked together with IEEE to come up with the standards for Wi-Fi. And here they are where we started from in the year they were adopted, what frequencies and the maximum data rate they did and the maximum range for them. So you'll see where we are um, today. So now it's AZ is already out. I'm on the A. Yeah, I'm on the AX, but um, Wi-Fi 7 is going to be coming out. So I wanted you to have a little comparison so you could see through the years and how it's grown and the capability of what it can do. But I wanted you to be also aware of the fact that they're not really going by the 802.11 numbering system. They're going by generation in this way now. And I do have uh, a tutorial on a simple home network, which I'm sure you've probably done. Also troubleshooting any kind of wireless connectivity and how to secure your Wi-Fi. Now, also I've provided, um, and I love this channel, in YouTube, uh, network topology. So when we talk about topologies, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next page, we're talking about what types of networks there are. So you have PAN, LAN, MAN, Campus, WAN, CDN, and VPN. Uh, you also have um, PAN, which is your home area network. So PAN means your personal devices, devices that you control, right? And it tells you here, the size of it, the devices, what they are, and how they connect. 
And if you look at PAN, we're talking about our mobile devices that we walk around with or Internet of Things or tablets or our wearables and their connectivity. With a local area network, that's what we're concentrating on here. And so that's, you could have many devices on a local area network within proximity of each other or remotely connected, but it always has to go back to some type of DMARC. And then the devices we're talking about here are computer, smartphones, access points, routers, and switches. And the connections can be fiber optics, ethernet, wireless, and yes, you can use cellular, uh, which is uh, 5G right now, 4G and 4G, LTE, and 5G. Uh, your metropolitan area network pertains mainly to your metropolitan area. So um, these are very large. These are municipalities like government agencies, uh, your utilities, and so on. And so there you see the same type of setup because they do the same things that we do in our enterprises, and the connections are the same. With a CAN, it usually says CAN, C-A-N, a campus area network, that could be uh, like a, an academic campus, but, but a lot of military bases call themselves CANs, campus area network. So it doesn't have to just be an academic institution and pretty much follows the same thing with devices and connectivity. The wide area network is global. That's how we link and talk to each other on a global scale. Now there you're gonna have gateways because we have to be able to have our computers, routers and switches, but we have to have the gateways to be able to communicate over a global, uh, over the globe, right? So there we're still using the same connections. With a CDN, you have connections of servers. That's our servers linked around the world. Uh, proxy servers, origin servers. And again, this is gonna pertain to points of presence. And I'm going to get more into that when I get more into the networking aspect of it. And of course, you've heard of VPNs, virtual private networks. Um, we use those to protect ourselves with a secure tunneling in uh, to get to where we need to go. And it can be on a global scale. Again, computer, smartphones, and tablets we tend to do, and virtual connections with uh, secure tunneling protocols. So I have a video that goes more into it. Again, I love this channel, so I use them a lot. Now, a little bit about networking protocols. These are just a few, right? We have HTTP because there's still websites out there with HTTP. Everybody really should be to HTTPS. So we have hypertext, right? Transfer protocol. We have our secure hypertext transfer protocol. We have what's called a file transfer protocol. We have the secure shell where we're talking about VPN. We have our media transfer protocol. We have for e uh, email, the post office protocol and the uh, internet message access protocol and the simple mail transfer protocol. And they all work together. And then you have SSL and T, uh, TLS. So you have your secure socket layer and your transport layer for security. And we talk security. So the secure shell and this one down here, we tend to use in tandem together uh, for security. But these are just a few. There's other, there's more out there, but these are the main, the more common. And I wanted you to be aware of those. And then lastly, I have a video on the different types of operating systems. So we know that we have Windows. We know that we have uh, Apple. We know that we have Linux, which is open source. And there's many different types of distros like Ubuntu or Kali, or you have different uh, options to use in the Linux open, um, open system uh, resources and community. Uh, again, this is a community of people, programmers, very vast globally that uh, create different different open sources and you don't have to pay for it. So again, everybody uses it. I used it more for web uh, web servers than anything because of the capabilities of it and the ease of it uh, when you're uh, scaling. Um, but also uh, you have to be aware though because it's a community of people. We do make boo-boos and there are people out there that tech can be malicious with what they're doing. So again, you always want to go to a reputable community of, of the Linux, um, uh, the Linux group. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I'm going to go back and check those videos uh, that I put in. And then I'm going to get this posted uh, this evening or um, supposed to go back to the hospital in the morning. Um, I'll try to get this posted now, actually. I'm going to go back and check these videos because I put them in. And I want to make sure they play appropriately. Okay. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Like I said, I'll be checking tomorrow. Will be a little more difficult because I've got to get him home here and get things coordinated with them, the VA folks. And then, like I said, Tuesday, I'll be getting ready to, to leave. All right. 
So I hope you've had a nice Mother's Day. Hopefully your mothers are here. My unfortunately my mom is not. Um, but I hope you have a nice has had a nice Mother's Day either with your wife, girlfriend, whomever, that it was at least a, a restful weekend. David, I'm sure you were probably working, sorry. Um, but anyway, uh, I wish you the best always. So I'm gonna sign off now.